How's it going, ladies and gentlemen? My name is Ruffle Rowlitz, and welcome back to a brand new video. Today, guys, we're going to take a look at some Pokemon rumors, leaks, all that kind of stuff. Let's get started. First things first, guys, is going to be this right here. Now, this was a rumor that was posted, and I think it's an interesting one to cover, so to say the least. Like, it's got some interesting elements in it that I think you guys will enjoy, but it's not the only thing we're going to talk about today. There's also some massive stuff that's happened, which is, weirdly enough, uh, the Pokemon company has officially put out a actual shiny hunting guide by themselves, which is really out of the norm. It's not something they normally do. Uh, it's a little bit weird, but nonetheless, we're going to take a look at that as well. But starting off with the rumor first, though, what do we have to see right here? Well, if we zoom out, take a look at the whole post, here is what it has to say. Now, new Pokemon development information from Anonymous. This was posted about yesterday, so not too long ago. This says, this is my first and last post. I am a foreign contractor working at Creatures, Inc., this actually is a common thing. It's not out of the, you know, norm uh, for uh, Creatures, Game Freak, a lot of companies to actually just outsource a lot of their uh, the development. Like, that's uh, a pretty standard practice. It happens a lot. And we know for a fact that Game Freak does this as employees at Game Freak have actually pointed this out several times before. So we do know that that is a, a, a thing that does happen. He continues on and says, um, and I have got information regarding the upcoming Generation 10 Games and Legends ZA. Okay, let's see what you got. Now, first off, I'd like to disprove any fake information and false narratives that Generation 10 could be coming out this or next year. Generation 10 was in pre... Uh, well, let's see, was pre-positioned as a 30th anniversary release some time ago after major issues with Generation 9. Now, it was positioned for release in mid-2025, but the higher-ups from other companies examined our work and determined that we should give more development time. Okay, but... First of all, how would you know this? Um, if you're working at Creatures, at best, you're working with 3D models. Like, at best, you're probably not working at the actual... Like, you're not making the actual game itself. That's still being put together by Game Freak. So how would you know that? That seems a little bit out of the ordinary. That seems a little bit weird. I'm not going to lie. It seems a little bit, uh, a little bit off. Um, but either way, apparently he's saying that they were going to be given more time to work on this, which is fine. Uh, that, that would make sense, sure, but it does also, uh, I still, it goes against what I've said before, which is, uh, and again, I could be totally wrong, but I tend to argue that next year is still the possibility for Gen 10. Legends Arceus and Generation 9 came out in the same year as well. 2022, we got Scarlet Mullet and Legends Arceus. It's not out of the realm of possibility that we could get Legends EA and Generation 10 next year. And I know everybody's like, 30th anniversary, guys! 30. They didn't do shit for the 25th either, okay? The 25th anniversary didn't have anything. The 20th, sure. 20th anniversary had Sun and Moon. There is a chance that might be the case again. That might be the case that they're going to do the same thing like they did with the Sun and Moon era, uh, where in Sun and Moon released, Pokemon Go released, Super Mystery Dungeon or something released, I think, as well. There's a lot of stuff that came out that same year in 2016, uh, which was the 25th anniversary, uh, 20th, sorry, anniversary. And then the 25th anniversary... They didn't really do much. Uh, we didn't have a new gen. We only had BDSP came out that year. So my point is that it doesn't necessarily mean anything. Now, he says, we were all surprised when this happened as we're all still working on remade animations for all the Pokemon that will appear in Generation 10. Okay, so fair enough. He says what he's working on, which is the reworking of animations for Pokemon in Gen 10. Fair enough. Now, this also meant our contracts would be renewed. Huh? Wait. So they were going to be given more development time, and because of that, they were given another extension on their contract, or the first extension of the contracts. I don't know how long they've been working there, but either way, you get the point. Now, which uh, many of our teammates were excited for. Now, this estimated uh, estimated release window is sometime in early 2026. Um, I mean, fair enough. Okay, early 20... Wait, really? I don't know. That's where you lose me right away. A Pokemon generation has never, as far as I'm aware, ever released early in a the year. They've always released new Pokemon generations during winter time. And the reason they always do it during like, you know, November and stuff like that, why they release new generations, which they did for, I mean, let's go back and think back, okay? New generation Pokemon games. And when I say new gen, I mean starting generations, right? Scarlet Violet, Sun and, uh, Sun and Moon, Sword and Shield, uh, X and Y. All of those. All of those that come out in November. X and Y, November. Um... Sun and Moon, November. Sword and Shield, November. Scarlet and Violet, November. Why would they change it all of a sudden to 2026 early? It doesn't fit with their mantra. By the way, he says, now this will be a bit, a bit after the next system has launched and will be an exclusive to that platform. Interesting. So he's arguing, so he's trying to say here that apparently uh, Legend, oh sorry, that uh, Generation 10 would be on the Switch 2, uh, the next console, 
rather than being a uh, rather than being a, a multi console thing. Okay, which honestly that's not that crazy. I mean, Legend ZA could be the final thing for the Switch. That could be the case, but I don't know. Now, he says that it's going to be exclusive for that platform. Now, as for ZA, I do not have much information as my team was not heavily involved in that project. However, I do know that after events with a game that gained immense popularity in the West, the game was delayed out of a late 2024 to some time that I do not know in 2025. Now, this was done to give the main developers more time to polish the game and for it to launch. Now, I guess what he's talking about here, some, uh, some like, you know, gained immense popularity in the West. He's talking about PAL World, okay, obviously. Um, this was uh, done to give the main developers more time to polish the game and for it to launch near the next system. As from what I've as from what I have heard, it performs very poorly on current hardware. Okay, currently the game is still planned to be cross generational. Uh, although it was debated if they should still target older hardware after the delay of uh, delay to 2025. As far as I'm aware, no other major projects are in development. As our other studio, uh, as our other studio Ilka is currently all supporting ZA main developers. This is all the information I have. Please excuse my bad English; it's not my native language. As the post, uh, ad any post after this claiming to be myself is not me. Okay, so. That's pretty much that. Now, I'm curious to, like, the way this guy's talking about this being his last post, it does give me this more of an inkling in the direction that he could be real. Again, it's just a rumor. I, I wouldn't take any of this as being actually real until it's proven otherwise. Uh, however, some of the stuff he says makes sense. Some of the stuff seems a little bit on, off for me. Um, again, the biggest speculation right now that people have is that the 30th anniversary, so 2026, not 2025, but 2026, will be the uh, actual release date of Generation uh, 10 in this case. That's what everybody keeps thinking because of the fact that it's the 30th anniversary. So it's a perfect way to match it up. I, I get it. Like, it's not that crazy. Um, but I'm curious, man. I'm very curious. Would they be willing to delay a Pokemon game just for the sake of making it better, given that they are the kind of company and the kind of organization that does like to just dump stuff out? Um, I don't know. I don't know. It is, it is an odd, odd situation. I'm not going to lie. It's, it's an odd situation, to say the least. But I'd love to know you guys' thoughts and opinions on this in the comment section down below. Just let me know what you guys think about this uh, and everything like that. So I'm just curious. Again, I'm just very curious. Uh, moving on, though, guys. Like I said, we do have an official guide now. Yes. Learn how to increase your chances of encountering elusive shiny Pokemon uh, across the Paldea region, the land of Kitakami, and the Terrarium of Blueberry Academy. Yes, there is a whole post, okay? A whole ass post. Uh, over on the Pokemon website on how to catch, uh, you know, shiny Pokemon. They start off by literally just telling you about getting the shiny charm, which is pretty self-explanatory, just completing the PAL day in Pokedex. Mass Outbreaks, the easiest way to find shiny Pokemon in Scarlet and Violet is through Mass Outbreaks, a phenomenon in which many of the same species of Pokemon appear in one location. As you battle and catch the Pokemon appearing in these Mass Outbreaks, your chance of encountering shiny Pokemon increase. Three different messages will appear during a Mass Outbreak to alert you of your progress. One, the number of Pokemon in the Outbreaks starting to go down. The number of Pokemon Outbreak definitely getting lower, and there are not many Pokemon left from the original Outbreak. You have the highest chance of encountering a shiny Pokemon when you receive the message that's uh, that says there are not many Pokemon left from the original Outbreak. So that apparently, okay, so that's interesting. At this point, it's best to avoid catching or defeating any Pokemon and keep your eyes appealed for the shiny Pokemon you're looking to find. If you wander to a new location or set up a picnic, return to the mass Outbreak, you'll find a new group of the same species has appeared, and that these new, uh, new encounters don't cause the Pokemon to disappear from the mass Outbreak. Now, the easiest way to battle and defeat Pokemon is uh, through the auto battle. So, yeah, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, now, even if you're not lucky enough to find a shiny Pokemon, mass outbreaks are a great way to collect Pokemon materials. Cool. Then, sparkling power, right? You guys already know this. Now, eating vendor food or making your own sandwiches grants you special benefits called meal powers. Primary way to activate sparkling power is by making sandwiches using Herba Mystica, a rare ingredient largely obtained through uh, the completion of five to six star terror raid battles. Um, and again, they do some more details about that. We already kind of know this. You can mix and match different ingredients. See below a list of the sandwich recipes that are granting you sparkling power level three for each of the types, as well as encounter and title power as well. So yeah, they just show you uh, the exact recipes. You guys can literally pause the video here if you want to have a look at these. Uh, I will just scroll, scroll through them and you guys can pause at any given time. Either way, they also talk about finding your favorites. Now that you know how to find shiny Pokemon of your dreams, you'll just have to be patient as you search for the wilds, uh, you know, for different Pokemon. And also, there was this post made by um, Mordecai who says, the way they just gave it a shiny Krabby uh, Patty, a secret formula, which most of us already knew, but they confirmed some helpful tips. I already did this before, so I'm glad they found, uh, I can finally refine the info in shiny Pokemon. So yeah, pretty cool. I think it's pretty lit. I think it's pretty awesome. Uh, I like that they basically confirmed it uh, and basically just gave us a full-on tweet explaining it. Again, I think it's pretty neat. It's not the biggest reveal 
in the world. I'm going to be honest. It's not like the craziest thing ever. Like, ooh, guys, oh my god, now we know everything. No, it's like not the biggest deal in the world, but it's nice to just know. Next up, though, we have this post right here. Now, this is posted by Soul Silver Art, um, and this one is uh, it's it's about specifically Zygarde. Now, Zygarde already showed up, and if you guys weren't aware, it already showed up in the most recent Horizons episode. Uh, and he's talking about how possibly it could be the case that uh, Zygarde, the one we see here, is a different one than one in the Pokemon anime movie from Ash's journey, now, or the journey in general with Ash. Now, he says, alternatively, there's no new legendary Pokemon, and Zygarde does get a new form. Maybe there's a two, there's two Zygarde, since apparently Pokemon Z, a game with a story about Zygarde, was cut out, but the X, XYZ anime, uh, Anipoki existed. Now, I believe some of the cut Z game, uh, game plot played out in the Annie Poke. Now, he's talking about the original Pokemon Z game. There used to be an idea and a plan and an actual development of a Pokemon Z, but it got canceled along the way. For whatever reason, it got canceled. Um, so it's possible, and we know some of the information about it from actual leaks. Uh, but the problem is, uh, he says here, uh, he never watched the actual anime, but I think one of the Zygods becomes uh, corrupted or is trying to protect the balance of nature. Now, Z could be one Zygod and A could be the other. Um... Also, I'm sure the devs would want to change it a bit now that everyone knows about the story, how the story went. Either way, this could also add up with the red and blue we see in the dash of the logo. Which, yes, we do see the, the red and the blue, which I think is um, interesting. But that's, again, that, that part right there where that's red and blue is still connected to the Z and not connected to the A. The A is separate from the Z, so I don't think they're connected. I think A is still a different, a different Pokemon or the ultimate weapon. It's got to be one of those two. I highly doubt it's anything else besides those two things. However, this leads us back to this original post he made here. Wait, what is Pokemon Horizons doing? I just woke up to the main villain with a shiny uh, Zygarde. There's so many potential implications. One, Game Freak planned to reveal Z Legend ZA this year and told this uh, the anime people about it. There must be a whole three to seven year concept game plot plan BTS behind the scenes, right? Now, this could mean the Scarlet Violet PLZ will be thematically connected that's possible now this is one main thing i've wanted from plza the explorer's whole thing is they are very paldea themed they use terrastall and their whole goal is to get terapagos imagine a terapagos and a terrastall tie-in in plza definitely possible maybe a connection between megas and and uh you know uh and terrest uh, terrestrializing now this zygarde has a red core there could even be more zygards with different colored cores could plza have multiple zygards who knows? Now, this is specifically a shiny Zygarde, a third dragon ground type legendary. Now, this is the clear counterpart to the shiny third dragon flying type legend, uh, legendary Rayquaza, which is true as well. It's a lot of shiny legendaries, man. What's going on? What's happening with the Pokemon anime? It's all shinies. Now, this is specifically a shiny Zygarde. Of course, now, this is very likely that many Pokemon we've seen in Pokemon Horizons will mega evolve. Rayquaza, Glalie, Aerodactyl, etc. Now, Pokemon Horizons seems like it's going to last longer than just the Scarlet and Violet story arcs. Many people think it may be shorter series that ends after Gen 9. Still possible, but it makes uh, makes it seem like they wanted to continue on. I think there is a chance that it, they will end it and they'll just restart it again with a new character again, just like uh, how Yu-Gi-Oh does it. Like Yu-Gi-Oh had, of course, Yu-Gi's whole journey in the in the first like season or two, uh, and then they change it to like. Um, Oh my god, I forget what his name is. But like Yu-Gi-Oh! GX, right? And then they continued, like that was like Yu-Gi-Oh! 5D or whatever it's called. It's like basically like they change the characters throughout, and you kind of get new new protagonists as you go. Um, which is very interesting. And you can also see Kuro here made a connection that if you look at the logo of the actual uh like this logo on the left side there, that, that logo is Team Quasar, right? Or a group Quasar group, or whatever they're gonna be called. Basically, this is a logo from the actual uh trailer that we saw of Legends EA. Interestingly, though, that yellow one matches very well with this one right here. So it could be possible that there's going to be a legendary or a Pokemon connected to that Quasar logo, which also connected to the logo of, of course, the uh, the Indigo Disc or, you know, just the DLC, actually, um, uh, logo as well, which had these uh, three colors on it, which are all connected to either one was uh, one of them was Terrapagos, one was Ogre Pond, one was Petrarunt, and the last one we still do not know. So who knows, man? We'll see what happens. We'll see what happens with that. Uh, but then again, I'd love to know your guys' thoughts and opinions and all that kind of stuff in the comment section down below on this. Let's move on to, of course, the next thing. Now, he talks here again about the continuation of this. He says, now, Gibeon having a shiny Zygarde to counterpart Luc uh, Lucius's uh, Rayquaza is one thing, but he also gi gi he's given off some Jetsis and Team Plasma vibes. Now, look at his clothing very similar to Jetsis and Team Plasma colors and maybe an Arceus design too. If you look right here, I guess, yeah, it's, it's pretty fair to say that they are similar colors, like very similar in, in design. Uh, that's, that's actually undeniable. Very similar, yeah. Yeah, very similar design, very similar thing going on. Uh, not going to deny that. Now, 
He says, could he be related to the sages or to Jetsis or obsessed with the godlike uh, Volo? Uh, the godliness like Volo, sorry. Ties, uh, ties to Pokemon uh, Legends Arceus and ZA. He also has uh, Amethio hair, so there may be some relation there. Lastly, look at the color of the ring around his chair. Looks like the same colors as the Mega Evolution symbol, which, uh, yes, it's kind of the, uh, the same kind of Mega Evolution, like uh, rainbow-esque colors, which you can see kind of going around him, which, yeah, it's true, man. It's a lot of little, little small little tidbits that you can kind of uh, discern from all this, which is pretty fair. So again, you guys' thoughts and opinions, let me know in the comment section down below. Moving on to this, guys. Now, new potentially valid uh, point towards uh, Pokemon Legends EA being set in the past. If it's set in the future, it'd be like a sequel to X and Y, but what about all the fans that have never played X and Y, which is fair. Again, it's, it's again, he's kind of been making this whole massive thread about this, about like, will the game be set in the future, past, etc. Sure. However, let's see what he says here. But what about the fans that have never played X and Y? Now, instead, it being set in the past does not necessarily require fans to know what happened in X and Y. Like, listen, setting it in the past is the most logical because... The, the, like, we basing it off of what we know, the most recent Pokemon game that was a Legends game was Arceus, and in that game, we were set in the past. So the most logical conclusion would be the game's going to be set in the past. Like, that, that's the most logical conclusion, without the doubt. Like, that's the most logical thing. However, there is not always a full-on logic with these guys. Like, you got to remember, there's, there's always a chance they could just go haywire and go a different direction. That's just something you have to remember. But, yeah. That's pretty much where I'm at. I, again, would love to know your guys' thoughts and opinions about this whole thing. Just let me know in the comment section down below what you all think. Uh, moving on, though, he's got a bit of a theory here. Now, he made a theory about, like, specifically, uh, what could this, like, you know, this extra Pokemon be based on, right? So we know Game Freak went wild with the grass type in Skull and Valet. They even gave it to the legendary Pokemon in Ogre Pond. If there really is a new legendary based on the A in PLZA, is it really going to be another grass type? That pattern on it does, uh, doesn't help, and Yggdrasil is into play here, too, which, yes, is true. Like, the actual third legendary or the new legendary uh, could be a grass type. Now he says, what if the pattern on the A of Legends EA isn't meant to be the leaf vein, but scales? The scales, the snake scales aren't too different from what we've seen here, especially if they are stylized. Could the A be another snake Pokemon opposite to Zygarde or just another Zygarde corrupted form of Zygarde? Who knows? I doubt it's going to be either of those. I think it's going to be just a brand new Pokemon, uh, which brings him back to this post right here. Now, if the A logo is a Serpentine Pokemon, or even another form of Zygarde, I'd totally lose uh, uh, lose it if it was an Orberus Pokemon. This adds up since the naming scheme of Legends EA is Z to A, as in beginning to end, and then from the beginning we would, uh, would eventually get back to the end again, and this would seemingly continue to infinity. I've also wanted to focus Orberus, like, you know, literally the snake that eats its own tail, right? So it goes on for infinity. Now, I always wanted a Pokemon based off of this. Something like the concept from Kesset Beast's uh, Aeroboros would be fantastic, in my opinion. My favorite beast so far. But yeah, that's honestly kind of a cool concept. And actually, a really cool idea here was drawn uh, of uh, Dunsparce and how it could look like if it got an evolution like that from uh, uh, Mikemon region. So yeah, it's a pretty cool concept, actually. Uh, but again... I'd love to know you guys think about it. And we, to be fair, we did kind of have this. I uh, kind of already had it once. But again, I digress. It is, uh, it is a cool concept nonetheless, in my opinion. So I'd love to know you guys' thoughts and opinions on this as well. Let me know. Moving on, we have this post right here. Now, this is posted by none else than Kuro, who said that although Friday, January 31st, 2025, sounds like a nice release date for Legends EA, I would not be surprised if the game releases instead on February 14th for Valentine's Day since Paris is the city of love. February was once the 12th month, 12 plus 14 equals 26. C is the letter 26. Sure, if they go that far and they do that much, like, that level of uh, thonking with their brain, and they're like, oh, guys, let's do big brain. Let's, we're, gonna, we're gonna go big brain on this, boys. Sure, cool idea, but... I doubt that's the case. However, he does say something interesting here, which is people need to realize that EA is being made by Game Freaks, Team B. Now, Team B, you've got to remember, Game Freak works in two sets, right? Team A, Team B, and there's also some other employees who work on side projects and other projects that aren't related to Pokemon. However, Team B are the people that made Legends Arceus. Team B are the people that, like, work on, on, on like, usually some of the more uh, experimental stuff, right? Whereas Team A are the people that work on new generations. So, you know, Skull and Violet. Sword and Shield, Sun and Moon, X and Y. Those are the people that are from Team A. So, what he says here is that uh, Game Freak's Team B, who did Legends of Arceus, so they had three years to do this. Games do not start development as of announcement, which is true. This means that Team A, who did Skull and Violet plus DLC, has two to three years to develop Gen 10 for 2025-2026, learning off of the Switch 2, which is fair. So, again, I would love to know what you guys think about this in terms of where do you think this game, like, at in terms of development time, right? When did it start its development? When did it begin? When did it end? 
when is it going to end, right? Um, how long has it been development? I'd love to know what you guys think about that, because personally for me, I think this game either started development very, very recently. Like, I'm talking, like, like really, 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 like, like early, sorry, late last year, right? So, like, I'm talking November, December, possibly, started development. Maybe even, like, you know, who knows? That's, like, either it started then, or logically it started development already back in Arceus's, after Arceus's release. And if you think about it, Arceus came out in 2022. So they would have had exactly three years by next year to develop this game, which is the same time cycle they always have for Pokemon games. It's usually always three years. So it wouldn't be that crazy. But yeah, what do you guys think about all this? Let me know in the comment section down below. I want to thank you guys all for watching, and I'll see you all in the next video. Peace out.